And now for our story. Peggy Douglas and Bill Mead stood on the front porch of Aunt Mary Lane's little farmhouse outside of Wakefield. It was the first time they'd talked since Bill's marriage to Kip Mead had been dissolved. The marriage which had caused so much unhappiness. It's wonderful to know there's nothing to keep me from... Well, that is, that my life is all clear again. It must be. I'm awfully happy for you, Bill. If you are happy. Happy, Katie? I don't know yet. That all depends. Peggy. Yes, Bill? I... Yes, it's been so long since I felt free to... to tell you how it is with me. How it's been all along, but... Well, now that I can, I don't know where to begin. I feel sort of scared. <laughs> That's the way I feel, too. Do you? <laughs> oh, I've thought about it so much. And when I think about it, I get very eloquent in my imagination. Now the words won't come out. You don't need to be eloquent, Bill. Oh, but I want to tell you how lovely you are. How I've missed you ever since, since things went wrong. I've missed you too, Bill. You understand, don't you, Peggy? As long as I was still married to Kit, even though we'd separated, I couldn't tell you how I felt. I do understand. I wouldn't have listened if you had tried to say anything until, until everything was straightened out. And now it is. Oh, Peggy, I love you so much. Well, I, I can't even say how much. I always have. I can't make a big speech about it. I wish I could. All I can say is... I love you. I love you. Oh, if only I could be sure what I want to say is right. How familiar it sounds. Like that night so long ago, before all the mix-ups, before Kit came home, when Bill and I were so happy. And yet even then, I, I was afraid. So much a little girl and so... so unsophisticated. I was trembling, I remember. It was a night very much like tonight. Moonlight, only warmer. It was summer. I'm so nice to meet you. Oh, Bill, I, I don't know what to say. I'm not sure. Darling, there's only one way for you to know. No, Bill. Please, Bill. I love you, baby. Oh, sweetheart. Oh, Bill. Do you know now? Can't you say I love you, too? Yes. I do, too. I love you, too. Sweetheart, you're trembling. Are you afraid? Yeah. My heart is pounding, so. Yes, so is mine. Oh, but honey, there's nothing to be afraid of. We love each other. What's there to be afraid of? I don't know. I... Didn't you want this to happen? I... Yes, I did, but... I've never kissed a boy before. Oh, you sweet dear. Well, now you're never going to kiss another one. You're mine. Oh, girl. Happy? I've never been so happy, girl. Well, Peggy, it's going to be like this forever. Just the two of us. Now we have something that nobody can ever take away from us. We don't let them. Will you promise me you'll never let them? I promise. Oh, Dad, I suppose it's different for a man. But for a girl, this is the moment she always dreams of. The moment when she tells the boy that she loves him. She, she never knows what it'll be like. I've tried to imagine, but I couldn't. That's why I was afraid, I guess. The feeling so... Strange, so new, almost like like being born, but you're so alive. So... I know. But it's not a different with Mary. I feel like, well, I feel like I have to hold you in my arms and take you. 
Ya, I love you. Now, oh, I knew then I could never say that to anyone else. Still, is it right? Can we go back? Can I ever feel the same again? Oh, I don't know. So much has happened. I'm afraid now. Almost the same as I was afraid that way. Peggy, don't you come to say anything? Do I like No, Peggy, don't. I love you. I always have and I always will. But I haven't the right to ask you if you love me. Haven't the right? Why, Bill? Because... Peggy, I know it seems that I'm free. I have my divorce. The baby's been given to Kip. I'm sorry about that, Bill. You know how much your son means to you. And yet... And yet... Yeah. Oh, Peggy, I can't stand thinking what'll happen to him if he's brought up in the Calvert house under the influence of Ben Calvert. I know, Bill. It is hard. But at least he'll have the, the material things. Oh, yes, he'll have the material things. He'll have opportunities that I could never give him. Perhaps someday he'll even be rich. But is that what counts? Peggy, I've thought about this thing, but sometimes I think I'll go crazy. I've talked to Aunt Mary, to David Bowman. And Peggy, I still think I'm right. I can't let Kip keep that boy if there's any way that I can prevent it. And I'm going to cry. I don't know how, but I'm going to keep crying until I know there's no hope. Well, now you know why I'm not free. Not really. You mean that there's still a possibility that you may get custody of the baby after all? Yes. Oh, I know that it isn't much of a possibility. I I can't even think of what it might be. But there's always that chance, no matter how small. The chance that someday the boy may be mine. And if that should happen... I see. It means that if that should happen, you and I were married, then I'd have to raise this child. Yes, baby. That's why I wouldn't let you answer. It wouldn't be fair. Unless... Unless you do love me that much. Peggy? Could you? Oh, Peggy. Oh, Bill. Why did you have to come here tonight? Why couldn't you have let me alone? Well, then, that's your answer, Peggy. Bill, I don't know. How could I? Good child. No matter how much I wanted to. Oh, I feel like a criminal even thinking that an innocent little baby could come in between us. It made you suffer, maybe, because, because I'm not big enough to overcome a feeling against its mother. You know, I might even try. I'd say that I would, but I'm afraid. Oh, Peggy, I've been selfish. You're right, I shouldn't have come here tonight. I, I, I don't know what I expected. A miracle, I guess. Well, I better be going. I'm sorry, Peggy. Will you tell Aunt Mary that the dinner was swell? And Randy and Lefty? Goodbye, Peggy. Goodbye, sir. This was what Bill needed feared. And yet hoped against hope wouldn't happen. And yet he asked himself, what else could he expect?